And for many of you guys out there, this, is your, this should be your gameplay as well. Listen up. Come in. Get close, guys. I'm giving you the juice. I'm giving you the good juju here. Okay? Come in close. I'm giving you the good juju. What's up, internet friends, founders, and the Entree Pro Curious? You've made it, and you're here. It's Adventure Daily with me. This, uh, these are the news bits from a founder's perspective, guys. A founder's perspective. I hope you are having a wonderful day today. We are getting into the week of March. Oh, my goodness. It is. I can't believe it. I can't believe that we are already at March, guys. So much time has passed. So much has happened in so little time. It's crazy, especially... You know, whenever I do these things, sometimes when I'm talking about the day and I'm getting into it, I just realize how much has passed and how much has been accomplished. I mean, it's kind of nice to, to be able to look back just quickly through the, through the year, the last couple months or so, and be like, wow, this is what happens when you intentionally move forward towards your goal. You intentionally move forward with purpose towards what you want to be, what you want to do, where you want to be. What you, what you want to create, what life you want to live. It's all possible, but you just got to take those steps every day. So I'm just grateful to be here, guys. I'm grateful to be a part of your day. I'm grateful to be able to read some news bits to you guys. And today we got a couple. It's actually two sad news bits of sorts. The first and foremost is Jack Welsh, the famous management guru, has chugoed. He has kicked the can. He's passed on, my friends. However, he had a lot of wisdom. He had a lot of great books that I've read personally. And we're going to go over an article of the five, that's right, five leadership lessons from Jack Welsh. Uh, I'm sure they'll be great. I haven't read this article yet, but you'll get my perspective from a founder. The second article that I want to cover today, guys, is about Atrium. Atrium Scale, Justin Kahn's $75 million startup that I was actually a part of as a, as a client. And so we were working with Atrium as a, um, as a provider for legal services and these types of things in my last startup. And so it's unfortunate to hear that Atrium Scale has gone under. However, there's some good lessons here. And one of the clear lessons is just because you've been a successful startup founder before doesn't mean you can do it again, even with great financial backing. And so I kind of want to unpack this, this thing, um, this startup by Justin Kahn a little bit and go through the article. Last but not least, in our final word to founders and community, I'm gonna be going over the shrug calendar about hiring talented people and why that's a hard thing to do, especially as a founder. And I'm currently moving closer and closer to the, the point when I need to begin scaling in my project. So I'll give you guys some updates on that. This is what we're gonna be covering. We're gonna be covering Jack Welsh, HM Scale, and hiring people in today's Venture Daily. Five unforgettable leadership lessons from the manager of the century, Jack Welsh. This is by Thomas Kualopoulos. Trying to summarize what makes a great leader like Jack Welsh in a few hundred words is pretty much close to impossible. We know the facts. Welsh joined GE in 1960 as a chemical engineer. At 37 years old, he was GE's youngest vice president in 1972. He was the CEO of GE from 1981 to 2001. During his tenure at the helm of GE's total market cap soared from 14 billion, bum, 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 14 billion to 410 billion, making him the manager of the century. But what, what isn't widely known is that Welsh credited much of his success at GE to some utterly basic management principles, which he learned from, from someone I did work closely with over a decade, Peter Drucker, also management guru. Peter Drucker's the man. The 20th century most widely cited and respected management guru. In fact, Welsh, Welsh's most famous tagline of fix it, close it, or sell it is one he attributed directly to Drucker. Drucker was as close as I got to Welsh. Speaking with Drucker during meetings we had from 1997 to 2001 offered a powerful view into what made Welsh so effective as a leader. 
I've read several of his books. I can't remember their names though, but I remember one was all about differentiation and making sure that everyone within your company is differentiated. Some of his ideas, I would say, weren't outdated, but they certainly fit the traditional corporate enterprise. When it comes to startups, well, that's a whole different story. Sometimes you have to functionally decompose larger management ideas to fit startups. And the reason is, is because startups move so quickly. They're so innovative and we have to deliver quickly as well. In large, in large companies, uh, you're dealing with a behemoth. You're dealing with culture, people, masses of people that you have to move. And so certainly from a, uh, from a founder perspective, a startup perspective, some of these might be valuable, some of them not. Let's check it out and see which ones are. Number one, ask the important questions. Well, I can agree with that. Much of Welsh's management philosophy was built on two fundamental questions he learned from Drucker. First, if GE wasn't already in a particular business, would it enter it today? Secondly, if the answer is no, what are you going to do about it? That approach is what earned Welsh the moniker Neutron Jack as he abandoned every aspect of GE that was either underperforming or taking resources away from the best areas that were GE's best performers. Stop and ask yourself the same two questions. If you're riding your current wave because that's just one that you caught, but it's not the wave that you want to be on, then why the hell aren't you switching waves? It's a good question to ask. It's a great question to ask. Are you just here or are you creating your own future? Sometimes I, I have these types of conversations with founders around, hey, did this just fall in your lap or are you really passionate about this? And one of the things that I, I, I generally can feel out whenever I, I remember I was talking, I, I remember from just a conversation last week, I was talking to a founder and he was telling me his idea. And after he told uh, me his idea, I responded to him and I said, it doesn't even seem like you're all that passionate about it. it kind of this idea just kind of fell into your plate. So what makes you excited about this opportunity and excited about this startup and exciting and building this team because startups are freaking hard. It's not something that you just fall into and be like, yeah, I can do this. No, I mean, it is a, a trial and tribulation. And what we ended up getting to the point of is him admitting that it, he really isn't that passionate about it. And it kind of fell into his place and he's got a great co-founder. It's not enough to keep things alive, my friends. It's just not enough. It's just not enough. Number two here is inspire followers, not workers. This is intriguing. Let's see what they have to say here. In one conversation I had with Drucker, I asked him to tell me what it was about Welsh and other great leaders he'd worked with that made them such great leaders. Drucker looked at me and with a thick Austrian accent that made everything he said sound profound, he said that Welsh had the ability to do what all great leaders do, inspire followers. Welsh was obsessive about transparency and honesty, some would say brutally so. But at the same time, he was just as obsessive about pumping up his people and instilling confidence in them. Once equipped, one of the jobs you have as a manager is to pump every day self-confidence into your team and make them feel great. To make people feel like me, like me, and feel like I've got a full head of hair and I'm six foot ten, Walsh was five seven and bald. You may not want to see your role as a cheerleader, and it may be hard to picture Welsh in that role, but he took the responsibility as seriously as anything else he did. I completely agree with number two. Part of the thing that I love about moving into the venture capital game and deploying capital into great founders, into great startups, is that I'm naturally a cheerleader. I mean, look at me now. Look at me communicating to you guys for free on YouTube because I just want to be a part of your day. I want to, I want to encourage you. I want you guys to be inspired to go above and beyond. And maybe my voice just today will be exactly what you need to get up off that ass. Okay, get up off that ass and get to work. Grind it out. It's, it's, it's like I find that there's, there'd be such a sometimes such a dissonance when it comes to like people and their goals. Like they have, they talk a big game and they want to have, they have all these big goals, but like when the time is, the time is right to, 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 to work, they're sitting around like watching Netflix and talking to me about like the newest episode that came out on Netflix. It's like, bro, like, don't ever tell me that you're serious about grinding something out, becoming something greater, doing something different, changing your perspective, changing your world, changing the trajectory of your life. Don't give me the highfalutin talks about who you want to be and what you want to do when at the end of the day, your real behaviors, your real disciplines belie 
the fact that you're just not that interested. You're just not that passionate. You're just full of hot air. You know? I'm serious, seriously, man. Seriously. I want to pump you guys up. And great managers, great entrepreneurs, great founders, they inspire. They inspire people. Jack Welsh, you certainly knew how to do that. I bought your books after all. Number three, set priorities and then reset them. Drucker went on to talk about how Welsh would reevaluate his priorities every five years by asking himself, what needs to be done now? It was that Drucker. It was what Drucker had termed organized abandonment, letting go of the past and using a very conscious and deliberate assessment of the business faced on sh based on shifting markets and an outlook for the future rather than being bound by the anchors that may tie us to the past. In short, don't be afraid to let go of the future you'd planned for the one you hadn't planned for. Well, when it comes to startups, you never know what the future holds, so you got to keep trucking. The answer is always through. Take personal responsibility. Oh, man, I love this one already. I'm big on this. Take personal responsibility. Welsh wasn't, also wasn't afraid to stay in the game. Along with each five-year planning process, he would look at his top three priorities and ask himself which one he was best suited for and then focus on that task while delegating the others to members of his leadership team. Welsh saw that this as a way of staying in the trenches and staying sharp. All too often, we see management as something above the work that needs to be done, that distances you as a leader and dulls your sense of the business. Get into it, guys. Get into it. For me, I'm always in the game. I'm always in the weeds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people will say, yeah, when you get to be a manager, you get to delegate that stuff. No, you still need to have a finger on the pulse of what's going on. And especially as a small team, a founder, startup, these types of things, your hand's in it anyway. So never lose that. Even as you scale your company, you still need to know the pulse and the heartbeat of the company you built. That's important. Number five, love them to death. In the end, however, what defined Welsh's philosophy best was a quote from him, which I believe set the bar for every leader and every leader should aspire to. The quote is, get the hell out of the office. Get out and touch the people. Listen, listen, listen. Get inside their skin. Excite them about what they're doing. Give purpose to their jobs and lives. That's what this is all about. We spend most of our waking hours at these jobs. Make them fun, make them exciting, and reward the hell out of those who do the job you ask them to do. Absolutely. Be excited. Be excitable. Be, be the cheerleader for them because you're being taking part of their life, their narrative for the rest of their lives. That They'll always have worked for you at one point in time. Make that a good story worth telling. That summarizes the man and the sort of leader that we all would hope to emulate because it illustrates what, what may be the most important leadership lesson of all, that responsibility to create organizations and give people worthy, worth, dignity, and recognition. Absolutely, I completely agree. It's a sad thing to hear about Jack Welsh's passing, but he was a man on a mission and he led by example and he had great he had great examples that we can read about, great quotes that we can read about that show that he was a man who loved on people. I'm telling you guys, that's all I want to do. I mean, that's all I want to do. I want to love on people. I, I, I want to meet tons and tons of great people with great ideas. I want to give them encouragement, inspire them to build it, do it, even if I can't deploy capital into them. It doesn't matter. I love encouraging all the entrepreneurs and founders out there to live their best lives and to do something different. Jack Welsh did that as well. Leave a comment below if you've read one of Jack Welsh's books in the past and whether you agree with these. Let's move on to the next one, guys. Well, Atrium shuts down, lays off 100 people from this 75 million legal startup. Justin Kahn's hybrid legal software and law firm Atrium is, stepping, is shutting down today after failing to figure out how to deliver better efficiency than a traditional law firm, the CEO tells TechCrunch exclusively. The startup has now laid off all of its employees, which totaled just over 100. It will return some of its $75.5 million in funding to investors, including Series B lead Andreessen Horowitz. The separate Atrium law firm will continue to operate. Quote, I'm really grateful to the customers and the team members who came along with me and our investors. It's unfortunate that this wasn't the outcome that we wanted, but we're thankful to everyone that we came that came with us on the journey, said Khan. He previously founded Justin.tv, which pivoted to become Twitch and later sold to Amazon for $970 million. 
we decided to call it and wind down the startup operations. There will be some capital return to investors post wind down, Khan told me. Atrium had attempted a pivot back in January, laying off its in-house lawyers to become a more pure software startup with better margins. Some of its lawyers formed a separate standalone legal firm and took on former Atrium clients. But Khan tells me that it was tough to regain momentum coming out of that change, which some Atrium customers felt tell me felt chaotic and left them unsure of their legal representation. More layoffs quietly ensued as divisions connected to those lawyers were eliminated, but trying to build software for third-party lawyers, many of whom have entrenched processes and order leadership, proved difficult. The streamlined workflows may have not seemed worth the thrash of adopting new technology. If you look at our original business model with the verticalized law firm, a lot of these companies that have this kind of full stack model are not going to survive, Khan explained. A lot of these companies, Atrium included, did not figure out how to make a dent in operational efficiency. And that right there is the problem. Sometimes when you're breaking into a new industry or trying to disrupt a current industry, the problem is, is that you don't quite fully realize how entrenched they really are and the hurdle to fundamentally change the operations of the way that they did business before. <sighs> Disrupting law firms proves difficult, exactly. Founded in 2017, Atria built software for startups to navigate fundraising, hiring, acquisition deals, and collaboration with their legal team. Atrium also offered in-house lawyers that could provide counsel and best practices in these matters. The idea was that the collaboration software would make its lawyers more efficient than traditional law firm so they could get work done faster, translating to savings for clients and Atrium. That's why we joined Atrium. That's why we went through the process of, uh, of applying, getting accepted, and going through it with them. The problem is, is that it was during this time that they were making major shifts and they kept pushing us off. Atrium software included records, a Dropbox-esque system for keeping track of legal documents and hiring, which instantly generated employment offer letters based on details punched into a form while keeping track of signatures. The startup hoped it could prevent clients and lawyers from wasting time digging through email chains or missing a sign-off that could put them in legal jeopardy. The company tried to generate client leads by hosting fundraising workshops for startups, starring Khan and stories from growing Twitch. A charismatic leader with a near billion dollar exit under his belt, investors and founders alike were quick to buy into Khan's vision and advice. Startups saw Atrium as an ally, an ally with industry expertise that could help them avoid dirty term sheets or botched hires. But keeping a large squad of lawyers on staff proved costly. Atrium priced packages of its software and legal assistance under subscriptions, with momentous deals like acquisitions incurring add-on fees. The model relied less on milking clients with steep hourly rates measured down to six-minute increments like most law firms. Yet eliminating the busy work for lawyers through its software didn't materialize into bountiful profits. The pivot sought to create a professional services network where Atrium could route clients to attorneys. The layoffs had shaken faith in the startup as clients demanded stability, lest they be bought, caught without counsel at a rough time. Rather than trudge on, Khan decided to fold the company. The standalone Atrium law firm will continue to operate under partners Michael Negrains and Matthew Melville, but the startup developing legal software is done. Atrium's implosion could send ripples through the legal tech scene and push other entrepreneurs to start with a more focused software-only approach. And that probably right there is the biggest win from all of this, is that when a startup dies, when a star dies, it just gives opportunity because a vacuum ensues. And that means that more startups can learn from this mistake and create a better iteration next time. Now, I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad because I like Justin Khan. I like the idea. I've been following him since Justin TV. And frankly, I'd love to also have him on the VC Hunting Show, but he's too busy shutting down this company. We were also, I'm a big, such a big fan that we were really excited to be part of Atrium's process, to be, to be part of uh, one of their clients uh, for our venture back startup. But as I talked about earlier, we were just, we were, it was the timing. We, we had joined them last year, late last year, 2019. They were going through all this pivot. They pushed us off. So we weren't able to really use the program. And as you can see here, we kind of dodged a bullet because we didn't end up paying them. I think it was 80,000 or was it? I forget. Don't hold me to it. <laughs> we didn't. We ended up not paying them that money, so we ended up saving that money for our startup. But there's a lesson here. The lesson is is that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how successful you are. Nobody knows the future. It doesn't matter if you have a great track record. Nobody knows the future. It doesn't matter if you've had wins in the past. Nobody knows whether this is going to work. 
This is the nature of startups. This is the nature of founding companies. This is the nature of taking a bet and trying it and giving it your all. But that doesn't mean it's not worth it. It's totally worth it because this experience, I'm 100% sure, has given Justin Khan even more ammunition for his next startup, his next idea, and his next venture. I'm excited for Justin Khan. Justin, if you're listening, probably not. But if you like Justin, if you like Justin, leave a, leave a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up to this video, guys. Give him some props. I, I support him 100% and I look forward to what he's doing next. These are the two daily news bits from a founder's perspective, guys. Let's go on to the final word for founders and community. Did you know that there's even more value than just audio or video? Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at VC Hunting, and make sure to sign up for the VC Hunting newsletter, where you'll be able to get weekly news on venture capital, startups, founder stories, and the occasional wisdom extracted from Peter's brain. Go to vchunting.com to sign up. And now, back to the episode. Welcome back, guys, to Venture Daily, the fastest growing daily show in all of venture media. We are now in the segment, the final word for founders and a community. And today I want to talk about something that I'm bumping up against uh, as I'm getting closer and closer to building my own venture fund and establishing it. This one comes from the Shrug Calendar Norgrand, Norgrand at Ryan Norgrand. He says, you don't hire talented people to tell them what to do. You hire talented people to tell you what to do. I couldn't agree more. I've been meditating on this idea and, try, as, and, and some of you guys have seen from Twitter and from you know, other posts that I've made that I've hinted at this idea that I'm currently growing my team. A lot of the conversations that I'm having with venture capitalists, especially the ones behind closed doors and through back channels, are basically telling. They're asking me questions like, what are you doing? What's the thesis? You know, how much do you want to raise? Or what type of startups do you want to invest in? At the end of the day, what I'm always telling them is one simple line. I'm looking for a great relationship. That's it. I'm looking for a great relationship. You see, my idea can stand the test of time. I can have lots of ideas, but at the end of the day, I need a great relationship or multiple, many great relationships to make my dream a reality. I've been a founder for far too long, and I, re and I know this, and I know, and I know that I can, I can, go, I can go faster alone. I can totally go faster alone. I'm good, I'm a good solopreneur. I'm a good grinder. I'm a hustler, guys, right? I can go faster alone, but the only way to go farther, it was with other people. And so the conversations I'm always having with venture capitalists right now is I'm looking for the great relationship. And many of them, they understand that. And they're self-aware to realize that they aren't the right relationship for me. Or for, uh, I'm not the right relationship for them. Same idea. And so we have to click on this, we have to click. I need to find the right relationship, the right people, the people that sit down and talk with me and say, wow, Peter's got something. Yeah, Peter's got something, but I'm, not, I'm more than just interested. I'm actually interested in helping him. And I believe that I can leverage him at some level, right? Because it's all about leverage. I can leverage Peter to be more successful myself. And so I need this, these types of thoughts to happen as I'm meeting with people. And for many of you guys out there, this, is your, this should be your gameplay as well. Listen up, come in, get close guys. I'm giving you the juice. I'm giving you the good juju here, okay? Come in close, I'm giving you the good juju. Your game, whether you're building a startup, whether you're entre pro curious, whether you're starting an idea, whether you just wanna improve your career, you have to find great relationships. You have to find that great relationship. You have to find people that are willing to help you. You have to find people to get information from. You guys know, I'm meeting with all these VCs. I'm meeting with all these people. I got all these notes. I'm writing all these notes down. I'm learning a ton. It's a master class in education, guys. So, doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're building a new c company, a startup, founder, entrepreneur, high hustle, your career. You need to find great relationships to help you get to the next level. Because you yourself can go fast, that's true. But if you wanna go farther, you have to find other people. So Norgrand, at Brian Norgrand is correct. I'm taking a little permutation uh, from this. But he says, don't hire talented people to tell them what to do. Hire talented people to tell you what to do. You have to find those re great relationships, guys. You have to network the shit out of your life. You gotta network. 
I mean, people want to get to the next level. You might be one of those people. Let's say you're a corporate employee and you're, you're a senior or whatever, but you want to move to the next level of management. You got to network. You got to talk. You got to build relationships. You have to be top of mind when it's time for promotion time or the next opportunity within the company emerges and they say, who could fit in this? Instead of hiring someone new, who could we promote? If you're not networking, you're not going to be top of mind. You're not going to be brought up in that conversation. Network with people, guys. It's never what you know. Because I don't know anything about, well, you understand my point. Let's just say, I don't know anything about VC. And so great. I need to talk with people who know a lot about it and find that great relationship who's willing to maybe take a chance on me and help me build my dreams. So I'm telling you what I'm doing. Maybe you should be doing the exact same thing today. Guys, I hope this was encouraging. I love inspiring you guys. Keep crushing it. Keep staying the, staying the course, guys. Because I am. I'll be here. I hope that you will be too. Let's go, guys. Let's go.